Hello and welcome back. Today I just want to do a quick update and a follow up on the key value pair class that we worked on in the last tutorial. At the time I said that this was great for storing these simple variable types and it's easy enough to expand and add more variable types but it's not really suitable for storing object types. So today I just want to show how you can do that. Now to demonstrate I've created this script. Um, I've already created a class type in here, uh, inheriting from C common base. It does nothing, but it will work. And I'm creating an instance of that. It's not doing anything with it at the moment. This is a cut down version of a script I used earlier. All I'm doing is setting up a key value pair. Um, I'm starting out with a simple key and assigning a string value. Then I'm reassigning an integer value. And this print pair function will just print those values. I'm not using the C test at the moment. So let's just make sure it compiles first, which it does. And now if I move that aside, we can run that and see the results in the window. Uh, it's printing out the type name of the string first. The key is key, which is the same for all uses. And then the two string value prints out string value. And after I reassign it as an integer, the two string value points out, prints out the 33 value that I saved. That's so far so good. But now if I try to assign the test object that I've created, let's see what happens. And then I'll just duplicate that print statement. So now if I try to compile, I get an error. If I follow that error through, it's in the toString function because the toString doesn't know how to handle that object type. So there are some things we can do to fix this and I'm just going to take you through them. To begin with, I've taken away that simple test class and I've replaced it with a class I've called CTestSerializable. Uh, I'm using that name because I want the class to be able to convert itself to a string because only the class itself knows what information to put into the string. Now, I don't have very much in this class. All I've got is a string value, and the serialize simply returns the type name that it is serializable, has a value, and the value. Now, I know that at some point I'm going to need to test whether the class that I have, or the object of that type of class, can be serialized, and that I'm going to want to use generic functions of some kind. So I've also gone to the C common base and I bring that up here and in here I've added a serialized method as a virtual function. It simply returns an empty string but it means now that anything that inherits from C common base already has a serialized function available and if that class that inherits from C common base chooses to override the serialized function then they can return something more meaningful as I've done here. So having done that, I can create an object serializable of type C test serializable. I'm assigning a value to the value. And now this still compiles, just to check. That's fine. But I still have a problem if I try to assign that to the, the key value pair. So let me just put that in here. And if I compile again, I have that same error because the two string function doesn't understand this. So just to cover those things first, and then we'll move on and see how to solve the problem. In common base, I've created a virtual string serialize function that is intended to return a serialized or string value for a class. And in the base class here, I'm simply returning an empty string because I have no idea what the subclasses may want to do. In the subclass that I created for key value pairs, it's inheriting from C common base, which means it already has serialize available, but I'm overriding it by creating a public method called serialize and then I'm just returning some values that are relevant to this class. 
Other classes, of course, are going to return something that might be more relevant to them. So then I'm able to create an object of that class type and I'm able to assign values into this single value variable that it holds. But I still can't convert that to string using the toString method. So now let's look at that problem. So now I'm here in the key value pair class, the KVP, KV pair 2. Uh, this is the same class that we used in the last video. And I've got these two string methods already that handle basic data types. So the obvious answer to the problem that we have is just to create another one of these. Like so, um, which is a two string method that takes a type of C test serializable. And that will work now. I can go back to the key value pairs too. I can compile that and it's happy. But it's a little difficult to be creating this method for every possible object type. And remember that I said I'm going to want to use something more generic. So I can change this to C common base. Because remember that the C test serializable inherits from C common base, therefore it is a type of C common base. And so in this function, the two string method should still work. So let's just prove that. We'll compile. That's great. So no errors in the compiler. And if we run this now, we should be able to see the value printing out for that serializable object. Let me just move that, move that across, clear this, come back here and run. And here, as expected, the type name has come out as ctest serializable. Even though we defined the two string method as taking a type of C common base, and the two string method is now showing C test serializable is serializable and has value my value, which if we come back here, it has value my value, and you can see that the string has come from this. So, so far, so good. Now, everything that we inherit from C common base can be added into the key value pair, can be serialized as long as we implement this serialized method. And if we decide not to bother implementing that serialized method, then it will simply fall back to the common base and return an empty string. But what if we want to store something in the key value pair that can't be serialized? Obviously, we're going to miss out on the ability to serialize it, but what if we just want to use it for storage? So let's create another class that can't be serialized and see what happens. Now I'm back in the script, the test KV pairs 2 script, and I've added a class that is not serializable. It doesn't inherit from common base, so it's a not serializable class. I still have just a value to store, uh, but I don't have a serialized method. So now with that class defined, I'm creating an instance of C test not serializable. I'm assigning a value to the value member. And then I'm trying to set that into my key value pair again by using the set for the not serializable and print. Let's try compiling that. And again, an error. And if we follow it through, the problem here is in to string because there is no standard or there is no two string method that accepts a type of C test not serializable. And since it doesn't inherit from C common base, it can't use this. So to avoid the problem where the type of the value is not understood by the two string function, I could do something like this. So using templating, I've now added a two string method that types that takes a string of any type. And of course, I'm returning an empty string because this type has no understood method to serialize. If I now try to compile, that's successful. But let's try to run it. I'll just clear this window and run this. The run was successful, but you can see this line the C test serializable is now returning an empty string. So it's also falling through to that 
generic method. I can try changing the sequence of these functions. I'll clear that again. Compile and run and I get the same result. It's taking this templated generic method in preference to the method that uses a type of C common base. But there is a way to fix that problem as well and it relies on the precedence that the compiler uses in calling functions. I've placed, if you remember from last time, all of these two string methods that take function overloading, I've placed them all in the CKV pair value base class. I'm going to take this method that relies on the common base and I'm going to place that directly into the CKV pair value class. So from here it's not available to be used by any subclass that inherits from the pair value base but it is available in this CKV pair value class. And one more thing I need to do because this templated function will still take precedence over this method. I'm going to remove the template and I'm going to use the special keyword void. Now let's just see if that compiles. It does. Let's clear this window and run that and now on this line you can see ctest serializable is printing its serialized value and this line from the not serializable class is printing an empty string so let's go back and take a look at what's happened here in the kv pair value class I have a two string method which doesn't have a virtual or a non-virtual method in the parent class and it takes a type of C common base. When this is compiled there's a certain precedence that the compiler uses to determine which functions are going to be called and functions inside the class are called in preference to functions inside a parent class and if you've got parents of parents then it goes in a cascading flow up to the ultimate base class. So looking at the flow of functions, when we call the key value pair and we call the two string method, which is here, that returns the two string method from the value. And the value is a CKV pair value base. But when we instantiate it, we create it as a specific type of CKV pair value. So we're actually calling this two string method in the CKV pair value class. And that then calls the two string method with the value name or with the value variable, which will call any of these two string methods in the base class. But in preference, it will attempt to call this two string method. So if I pass an object in here that is of type C common base, then we'll call this method first before calling any of the methods in the base class. And because my serializable class is of type C common base, then it will return the serialized value from that class. If it's not of C common base type, then it will fall through to one of these methods. So it will either use these with standard variable types. And if none of those are suitable, then it will call this method that takes void, which will effectively take any pointer variable. And so now we're able to store generic non-serializable methods. And just to demonstrate that the serialized method itself has no value or has no bearing on how this runs, I can actually place a serialized method in here. And to show that it works, I'm going to
print the serialized value. here and now if I just compile that to make sure I didn't make a mistake I will clear this and run it so now you can see that the serialized method is callable from C test not serializable but I'm still getting an empty string from the key value pair because as far as the key value pair is concerned it doesn't inherit from C common base and therefore it's not a serializable class. Now, if you don't necessarily want to inherit everything from that one C common base class, you can always extend this by just adding more methods here that use a particular base class for your serializable classes. But this is a nice simple way and it inherits everything from C common base. So as soon as I inherit from that, I know that I can call the serialize method. And I know that if the child class hasn't implemented that, then it will try the parent class of that and ultimately, ultimately get to the common base class, which does have a serialize method. So that's the simple follow up to the key value pair. It can now store objects, serializable or non serializable. And if we were to try to store this in the CSV file, as we've done previously, we would still be able to get the key back and the type, but we would just get an empty string for the serialized value of the non-serializable class. So I hope you found this useful. If you have, please click the like button. And if you want to see more of these videos, then click the subscribe and remember to click the bell icon to be notified when more videos are released. So until next time, thank you for watching.